All right, here we go with video four for chapter five. And in this section, we're going to be setting up and solving proportions, which we've already done a little bit of, but we're going to build on that. So in this section, we can set up um, our own proportions, making sure that we line those labels up, like we talked about in the last video, and also then solving the proportions. And in this section, we're mostly just going to be doing it mentally um, by scaling up and scaling down. Next section, we'll learn some other strategies too when you can't do it all in your head. Um, so I know this is video four, but it does go with section 5.3. Okay, so in this, uh, the rest of this chapter, you're gonna hear, hear me say scale factors and scaling up and scaling down a lot. So here's an example. If I start with this uh, fraction or ratio, four to six, I could um, scale it up. Maybe I want to make the numbers bigger. Think of recipes. Maybe you have more people coming over and you need a bigger recipe, a bigger batch to feed more people. So I can scale it up. If I scale it up, then I'm actually going to be multiplying and I want bigger numbers. I'm trying to have a bigger recipe. So maybe I multiply all the ingredients by three. So instead of a ratio of four to six of two of my ingredients, maybe now I have a ratio of 12 to 18, 12 cups to 18 cups, because I'm making a bigger batch. So when I say scale it up, I mean multiply it by something so the numbers get bigger. Or maybe I only have two people coming over for dinner and I don't want leftover, so I want to scale my recipe down. So instead of four cups and six cups, maybe I divide both the ingredients by two. So now I'm only going to use two cups and three cups in my recipe. So scale it down, divide to get smaller numbers. Okay, so this is also known as simplifying or reducing. So we've done this a little bit before, um, but now we have a term for it scale factor. A scale factor is the number that you multiply by. So in this example, my scale factors are three. I scaled it up by multiplying by three and one half because I multiplied my recipe by one half. So scale factors are what you multiply by to get your new recipe. So this is a good time to point out uh, this little trick or this fact, right? We've mentioned this before too. But if I want to multiply by one half, like 18 times one half, whenever you see multiplication um, or the word of, they mean the same thing. So this means I want half of 18, which we know is 9, or a third of 15, which I know is 5, or a quarter of 24, which I know is 6, or one-fifth of 30, which I know is also 6. So multiplying by a fraction here ends up being the same. We've said this before. It ends up being the same as just dividing by that denominator, right? 18 divided by 2 would give me the same answer. Or here, 15 times a third, that's the same as 15 being divided by 3 right? The answers match. Or 24 times 1 fourth. A fourth of 24 is the same as saying 24 divided by 4. Or 1 fifth of 30 is the same as 30 being divided by 6. So we're going to remember that and use it a lot in the rest of this chapter. So fill in the blank on your paper. I think there's places for you to write this down. Multiplying by a fraction is the same as dividing by that denominator. Um, it's something we've already been doing, but we're going to use it a lot. Okay, so in this section, in section um, 5.3, there's two strategies we're going to use. Mental math to scale things up and scale things down, and setting up a table when it's a word problem to make sure we get everything lined up the right way. Then we'll do a little bit more different methods um, in 5.4. But here's the first one. What if I have a problem like this? Solve the proportion, right? Find this missing number, n. If I have the, pro uh, the proportion 8 fifths is equal to n over 15. Well, when they say do it mentally, it means just look in your head and see if you can figure out what to multiply by. So if I look here, remember your, well, your arrows are always going to go towards the missing number so that we can find that n. So what do I have to do to 5 to get to 15? Well, i got to multiply it by 3. And in order to keep it proportional or keep it equal, i got to do the same thing on the numerator, the top and the bottom. So 8 times 3 would give me 24. And those should be now equal. They make a proportion. So let's try these ones. Sometimes your numbers will be getting bigger. Sometimes your numbers will be getting smaller, right? Scaling up or scaling down. Think about what you'd multiply by or divide by. And make sure your arrows always go towards the missing number like that. So what do I have to do from to go from 5 to 20? OK, 
Okay, I got to do the same thing here. So 8 times 4 would be 32. All right, you try 4 and 5. So pause it, draw the arrows, make sure your arrow is going towards the missing number, even if it seems like that one's going backwards. Go with that way. And uh, then check 4 and 5. Okay, I think it's easier to think in terms of division. So I wrote down that I divided by 2 on the top and the bottom. You could also say I multiplied by 1 half. Or in this one, you could say I divided by 3 or I multiplied by 1 third. Either way, and then you get those answers. Okay, so that brings us back to these. We've done a little bit of um, this in 5.1. Um, in these ratio tables, they're always going to give you one set of numbers to start from and then ask you to find the rest. So I'll do one table and then you get to practice one. So, um, let's see. It, you can use mental math to find any of these ones. Like this is dividing by 2. So let me divide by 2 here. And I get 9. Then I notice maybe this is easy in my head. I can divide by 3. So this gets divided by 3. Even if it doesn't work out nicely, I know that I'm dividing by 3. Grab my calculator. 8 divided by 3. 2.66 repeating or 2 and 2 thirds. Um, so I could use my calculator or I'm simply just uh, simplifying 8 thirds to get that answer. Keep going with your mental math. Let's see, this could be multiplied by 10. So this could be multiplied by 10. Um, what else? This could be multiplied by 4. So this should be multiplied by 4. And looks like I have one more. Let's go from 9 to 27. That got multiplied by 3. So 8 will get multiplied by 3. There we go. Cool. All right, so you try the next one. Try the next chart. Start here. Simplify or scale up, scale down. Use mental math to help you out. And then pause and we'll check it. Okay, I didn't show all the arrows because you might have done it um, using different numbers or a different way, but check what you have so far, and then let's talk about this last one. Nothing that I can do easily in my head. I can't use any of these numbers to make 33. So now I'm going to have to probably grab my calculator. This is where it goes from not quite mental math, but we're still using the same strategy. So remember we say, okay, you know, how many of these does it take? Let's, hmm, let's go from 6. How many times does 6 fit into 33? Well, on your calculator, 33 divided by 6 goes in five and a half times. So you may have to use your calculator to help you when it doesn't go in evenly, but we still do it the same way. So 4 times 5.5, 22. Cool. Okay, this is kind of the next strategy of setting up a table to help you. So it says the ratio of quarts to gallons is 4 to 1. If a recipe calls for 14 quarts, how many gallons would be needed? So I have this tic-tac-toe board here, and we're going to use that to make sure we get everything lined up. So I have quarts to gallons, and they tell me the ratio is 4 to 1. And then if a recipe calls for 14 quarts, I would make sure it's lined up with quarts right here. 14 quarts. And how many gallons? That's what I don't know, so I put an X in there. When you use this uh, tic-tac-toe board, it'll just make sure things are lined up. And then this is my proportion. Just make sure that your quarts and quarts are lined up, your gallons and gallons are lined up. This is like recipe one, this is recipe two, or, you know, scale two, and then I can solve for the missing X, okay? So, again, use your arrows. Um, let's see. Mentally, easily, in my head, I can see that this got divided by four, so this should get divided by four. Remember, your arrow should always point to the missing number. And now I can do 14 divided by four. Three and a half. So to keep the recipe the same, I would need three and a half gallons um, of whatever I'm making. <laughs> All right, so let's do that again with this uh, recipe for soup. 
okay? Um, here's my recipe. I gotta follow that recipe, but now I'm gonna put in six cups of black beans. So let's set up our, um, our chart, our, our tic-tac-toe board. So in the original recipe, I looks like I need one and a half cups of beans. And I have it labeled here, right there, um, labeled as beans. And then how many tomatoes? One tomato. So now if I change the recipe in recipe two, now what if I have six cups of black beans? How many cups of tomatoes do I need? So here's my proportion. And I gotta find that missing value. Look for anything that you can kind of scale up in your head. So maybe you notice, hey, this gets multiplied by four. So this would have to get multiplied by four, four tomatoes. Okay, there's two more here. Remember, recipe one, recipe two, ingredient one, ingredient two. Set it up this way and you'll be able to solve for the missing part. So, what if the chef uses three cups of salsa? How much water? Okay, now I'm looking at salsa and water. Half a cup of salsa to two cups of water. What if I use three cups of salsa? Three cups of salsa, so this one will be salsa. This one will be water. How much water do I need? All right, I'm going to stop there, pause it, fill in your arrows, see if you can get it, and then try this one, the next one. Okay, so in this top one, I scaled it up by six and got 12 cups of water. This one, I was comparing water and beans. So here's my original recipe, two to one and a half cups. And looks like this got multiplied by eight, so this should get multiplied by eight. Or sorry, by nine. By nine. So one and a half times nine, and I get 13 and a half cups of beans to make that recipe. Okay, these ones um, are test questions, right? So on your test, if it was worth 60 points and you got a test score of 60%, so we know for a proportion, we always need four numbers, right? We always need one ratio equal to another ratio. But here it looks like I only have two numbers. So here's the trick. Whenever they give you a percent, that's always out of 100. So I actually do have another number there. It just, it's rolled into the percent. So, test out of 60 points. Well, how many did I get out of 60 points if I got a test score of 60%, 60 out of 100, okay? So we're just gonna set this up, just write the proportion out. So here's what I'm trying to find. See if you can figure out how to write the other ones. Remember that all of your percents, like 70%, is gonna be 70 out of 100. So you're gonna have your score, and then your percent out of 100. So try those next four. Just write them down and set them up. We're not gonna solve them, just set them up. Okay, let's talk through them. So the next one, test score, we're on number three. We're going out of order. Uh, test score of 70%, you got 98 correct. So I got a score of 98 out of how many? I don't know, but it turned out to be 70 out of 100%. That would be my proportion and I'd solve it for X. Or here, test worth 50 points, so it's out of 50. How many did I get right so that I got a score of 70 out of 100? Or a test worth 85 points, I had a score of 76 and a half. What percent did I get? So what percent out of 100? So this is just practice setting them up. Um, on the next slide, you have some review of everything in this video. So there's one, two problems, and then two charts to fill in. So pause it, do these as practice, and then we'll check them. Okay, in the first one I saw that they both got multiplied by the same thing, so my answer is yes, they make a proportion. In number two, they didn't, it didn't work out. I multiplied the top one by nine, but that's not what happened to the denominator, so my answer is no. And here's my charts. Um, you can take a second to check them. I tried to show some of the work, especially for the ones that you can't do as easily in my head. Um, you might have used different numbers or done it a different way, but make sure you do know how to find any of the missing numbers in these. If you're still having trouble with them, let me know so I can help you. We can do more examples or more practice. Um, but that's the end. After you check these, that's the end of video four.